The Passion of Jesus I Was Thinking of You Written by Miss Lorianne Matisse Read for you by Chiquito Joachim Crasto Scene 18 Setting Back at Pilots Pilots Last Plea John Chapter 19 Verses 5 to 17 One of the soldiers moved forward to hand the staff back to me. At least it looked like he wanted to hand it to me. But instead, with one last mocking grin, he brought it down upon my head and then passed it to his comrades. They proceeded to strike me in the face. My face, now marred beyond recognition, fulfilled Isaiah's prophecies. His face is marred beyond human likeness. When the beating finally stopped, Pilate cringed as he presented me to the crowd. Behold the man! Surely the crowd would relent. Surely the religious leaders would stop this madness as they witnessed the shattered remains of a man standing before them. Pilate thought, as he held his breath for what seemed to be an eternal time continuum. As in a nightmare that does not end, the crowd continued. Crucify him! Take him yourself, Pilate retorted, and crucify him. The chief scribes and Pharisees answered, We have a law that he should be put to death, because he called himself the Son of God, equal with God. I was God. I am God. I am that I am. Standing before them was the very God who made the heavens and the earth. My father and I are one. All throughout history, until the end of the age, men and women will decide that I am not God. They will write books about my life as a prophet, but they will not believe who I really am, who I said I am. These false prophets will influence others to not believe in me, therefore causing little ones to stumble. They will strip me of power, or so they think. They will supposedly be new information about me that is uncovered to prove that I am not God. But throughout the centuries, men, women, and children will come to me and know me. These precious followers will understand my redemptive power. The powerless do not like it when someone else is powerful. It bothers them because they know their hearts are foolish and dark. Because of their impotence, they surround themselves with big words and high degrees of knowledge where they esteem each other's outsides without ever cleaning the muck on the inside. These teachers are empty bags of water. They are not able to give you a drink of pure living water of Yahweh, because they are not drinking from the well of salvation. These people are blemishes at your love feasts, eating with you without the slightest qualm, shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars, from whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Jude chapter 1 verse 12 There will always be these people until there is no more time. You know them by their fruits, remember? The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. Anyone who does not love does not know me, for I am love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. This is how you will know if they are my disciples, 
if they have the fruits of the Spirit and they love Yahweh and all people, if someone loves me with all of their heart and loves their neighbor as themselves, there are no commandments greater than these. Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. As I taught in the temple, I answered the religious leaders who did not recognize me. I said, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. I go away and you will seek me, and will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. John chapter 8, verses 19, 24, and 25. They said to me, Who are you? The religious leaders had seen me teaching daily in the countryside, feeding the five thousand, healing the sick, and raising the dead. Why did they not recognize me? If they had known the Father, they would have known me. When I said, I am going away, and you will look for me, and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. The religious leaders murmured among themselves. Will he kill himself? Is that why he says, Where I go, you cannot come? So often, that is how it is with religious leaders. They cannot understand spiritual truth because they are so deeply embedded into their own doctrines. I told them, You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. John chapter 8 verse 24 they still could not understand. They will not even understand after they have lifted me up to be crucified. They do not know that I only do what pleases my Father. They do not know me nor my Father. My Father and I are one. Many of my people, who are humble of heart, will believe me, which is how it will be throughout centuries to come. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 The proud cannot see me. The religious leaders argued with me. They could have received me as a son of God and spared their people years of hardship being scattered throughout the earth like vagabonds, but their pride had blinded them. They would rather establish their own righteousness than accept the righteousness of the Messiah. I told them, if they would listen to my teaching, they would be my disciples. They would know the truth, and the truth would set them free. But instead of listening and accepting me as a child would, with a pure heart and pure motives, the religious leaders stammered back and forth referring to their traditions rather than realizing the day of their visitation from their own Messiah. We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we will be set free? They retorted. I responded that they are indeed slaves to sin. Slaves have no permanent place in the family. On the other hand, a son belongs to the family forever. If the son sets you free, you are free indeed. John chapter 8 verse 38 I said to them, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you seek to kill me, the one sent from Yahweh. You have no room for me, for my word, even though I have been with the Father and he with me. You are doing what you have heard from my father. You are the father of the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. 
he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaks a lie he speaks of his own for he is a liar and the father of it john chapter 8 verse 44 they stubbornly replied abraham is our father we are not illegitimate children i wish i could have pierced their petrified hearts with my truth but spirit cannot communicate with flesh they were dead in their sins i wanted to weep for them but it was for their followers i had the greater compassion leaders come under greater judgment it must be so again they clamoured we are not illegitimate children the only father we have is god himself i replied if god were your father you would love me for i have come from god i have not come on my own why is this not clear to you it is not clear because you cannot hear what i say the ears of your heart are deaf because you belong to your father the devil and it is your father the liar who wishes for me to die and you will carry out his desires he was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth for there is no truth in him he is the father of lies the reason you cannot hear me is that you do not belong to god from john chapter eight paraphrased it is so now and it will be so throughout generations many of my chosen people of israel will crucify me over and over again yet some of my own will receive me as their messiah and i will be a savior to them they will run to tell the rabbis and leaders of their synagogues with great joy and elation when they speak of me and my salvation they will be driven out of the synagogues temples and mosques beheaded stoned to death hung on crosses or burned at the stake and the hardness of the religious leaders hearts came down on me like the staff they were beating me with i was thinking of my followers you might not be martyred after you give your life to me but you may feel ostracized from your family and be driven out of your circle of friends when you are ridiculed for believing in me i am thinking of you the hardness of the hearts of the chief scribes and pharisees made pilate afraid also if i jesus who stood before him truly committed blasphemy and Pilate did not succumb to their angry cries for my blood, the people would turn on him. Pilate could not have that happen. He thought again. If he could persuade me to give up my claim, then this whole filthy incident could blow over before midday. Where do you come from? Pilate asked me again. I remained silent. I could have said anything to save my life at that moment. Yet, I am the truth, and there is no lie in me. I cannot lie as the religious leaders do. The time it took for me to not answer encapsulated the last three years of my ministry on earth. Now was the time of my salvation, and I would not give in to any ploy of man. Pilate felt an unshakable fear crawl up his spine as he waited for my answer, which he knew would come eventually. The fear crawled up his spine like leeches, clinging to him in order to suck the very life from him. Poor Pilate! He was just a pawn. The battle raging around him began thousands of years before he was born. The battle of good and evil, dark and light, and this particular battle would not be over until the hour of my crucifixion. Even after that, the spiritual battle will continue to rage for two thousand years, but during that time, all one has to do is call upon me, Jesus the Messiah. I will crush the serpent's head today and forever. Do you refuse to speak to me? 
pilot resounded in what sounded more a command than a question. Don't you realize I have the power to either free you or to crucify you? If I was a mere man, I would have trembled before him. But I knew that all power had been given to me, and that I could use it or restrain it or give it to anyone I pleased. Absolute power belonged and always will belong to Yahweh. I finally answered Pilate, breaking the heavy silence with words he could not understand. You have no power over me, except that it has been given to you from my father. He who hands me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. I said this, for truly, my people should have recognized me as their Messiah instead of crucifying me. But I knew before the foundation of the world this would be the path of my destiny. Therefore, the prophets made mention of me for thousands of years before this day in the Old Testament, the Tanakh. Pilate wanted to let me go, but he felt his hands were tied by an invisible thread, the scarlet thread of redemption that belonged to my father only. It had to be so. The thread had been woven throughout history and would continue to be woven today until the end of the age. Pilate pleaded with the Jewish leaders, but they answered back aggressively, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. The shouts were relentless. Pilate brought me out and sat down on the judge's seat at the pavement, Gabata. It was between six and seven in the morning. Once more, Pilate presented me before my people. Here is your king. Take him away, they shouted. Crucify him. Ugly, isn't it? the dark depth of a human heart. All of creation is lovely. The plants, trees, animals, the sun, moon, stars, the atmosphere that surrounds the earth, the rain, snow, wind, the ocean depths, the mountain heights. But a human heart, who can know it? Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, my people answered. Solemnly, with great trepidation, head hung low, eyes cast to the ground, Pilate handed me over to be crucified. The eyes of the Jewish leaders were like hollow vacant tombs, black holes of death with snakes writhing in momentary victory as a sentence was uttered. The demons, those of their father, the devil, passed in and out of them. I could see them and hear them, clicking their teeth with cries of victory. Perhaps the sound, if I could describe it so you could understand, would sound something like the gnashing of teeth. But I was no longer thinking of the demons, the rabbis, and the teachers. I was not thinking of Pilate nor his wife any more. I was thinking of my beloved disciple, John. I was thinking of Mary of Bethany. I was thinking of Mary Magdalene and my mother, Mary. I was thinking of them huddled together outside the pavement, scared, shivering, murmuring among themselves, trying to comfort each other with very little success. Of course, my mother would be attempting to comfort the others, even though she was suffering the most. She would recite stories of my youth. She would whisper words such as, Special, unique, full of words of wisdom, profound for my age. She would describe how she felt when she was pregnant with me, a divine conception, and how she knew... I would have to suffer one day. She would be telling them these things to give them hope. My beloved ones wanted to put their trust in her eyes, to rest in her words, 
they wanted to believe there was something greater going on in the midst of this dark hour. Although they did not understand, they loved me to the end. They would follow as close to me as they possibly could while I make my way up the Via Dolorosa. They would stand as close to me as possible at Golgotha. I longed to comfort them. And soon my spirit would comfort them. But for now, they had to trust in the love that I had lavished on them over the past years. I was thinking how devious a human heart can be, but also how precious a human heart can be, one that is soft, loving, and pliable. I was thinking how a tender heart can be a vessel for my spirit to pour through, much like myself, for I was a tender shoot. I had grown up like a tender shoot in Israel. I grew like a root out of a dry and parched ground. I had no beauty or majesty that made me attractive to people. Nothing in my appearance made people desire me. I was despised and rejected. I was and am a man of suffering. I am familiar with grief. Isaiah Chapter 53, verse 2 I was now being led out of Gabbatha. The people who had wanted me to be crucified could not look at my face any more as I passed among them. My face was too bloody and beaten. It was too grotesque. I, Jesus, am the face of Yahweh. Their sins had marred my face, and yet, if they would look at me, they would see the love in my heart, which shines through my eyes even now. My heart beat with love for my people this day. As many who would receive me, I would give them the right to be a son or daughter of God. I am thinking of my tender ones, as I was thinking of you, and am thinking of you now. Do not harden your heart when the road is rocky and the path that leads to eternal life is long. Look at me, your Saviour. My heart will beat for you and pump the very blood of my life into your tender heart. When your heart is pleading, silently weeping, think of me, for I am thinking of you. I will save your tears in my bottle. I will write them in my book. Psalm, chapter 56, verse 8. It is for your tears pouring from your soft heart that the tender heart of the Lamb of Yahweh will die today. For I am thinking of you as I am thinking of you now. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Take courage. Eve's Memoirs and Other Books and Art by Laurie Matisse, available at www.evesmemoirs.com www.lauriematisse.com www.mysticcenter.com Laurie's Blog, Weaving Light lauriematisseblog.wordpress.com For information on Eve the Musical, Contact Laurie Matisse at gmail.com. End times info www.mysticcenter.com. www.calculatingthelast7.com. Support the work of translating this book into other languages. https colon two forward slashes www patreon.com forward slash Laurie Matisse.